We, we are in Ain Yaakov, and uh, please like and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so you can get a notification so you'll never miss a class. And also give a like and a comment. And as I was just saying, I'm seeing, I'm seeing in 99 different countries. Thank you much, so much for all my viewers. Okay. <laughs> so, lo yei ha'ish. It says, in, uh, okay, I'm sorry, we're on 63A1. Are you there yet? We're at the Mishnah. I got, I got 63A. <laughs> You have 63 A's? So good. She should be right with us. So it says, Lo yedze ish, lo besayef, lo bekeshef, lo bedris, lo ba'alev, lo baromach. On Shabbat, a man may not go out in the public domain with a sword, nor with a bow, shield, nor with an Allah. And an Allah is, the Gemara will tell us what an Allah is. Okay, that's right. The Gemara will tell us in two minutes. So, im yadza, if the person goes out, Chayev, Chatad, he's obligated to bring a sin offering because he's broken Shabbat. Uh, Rabbi Eliezer, Omer Tachchit, and Hainlo, Rabbi Eliezer disagreed. And he says they are, or, they are uh, ornaments for him, so he could go out with these. We have an argument as to whether, I can go with, whether or not a person can go with a sword, bow, shield, or an Allah, which will be, I mean, ultimately it's going to be uh, a mace or something. Okay. And so uh, the, the question is, of course, if you want to update that, we're talking about a person going with weaponry, mm -hmm. okay? And one opinion says that that is, a, I just want to get into one halacha here because yeah. this is applicable today. So, uh, well, they're all applicable, but the question is, what are these, what's the foundation? Is it that they're going out to protect themselves and that's why they have this? Namely, the bow, the sword, the bow, the shield, and an Allah? Is it for protection purposes? Or is it for uh, ornamental purposes? What is my, what's the, what's the thing? So, and now, let's update that. Could I go out with a knife? Could I go out with my gun? What, again, what are, the ramifications of this mission, which everybody wants to use to show I can bring a gun, uh, and, I, and I'm not picking on, I'm not going to get, I'm not going to say what the halacha is. I'm just saying this is where we're getting it. Self protection, if I'm protecting myself, does that allow me to carry these things in public where there's no error? So, oh, so I was going to ask, with or without an error. So he's talking without an error. Yeah, that's the point. You have going on to public domain. Yeah. Uh, if, uh, so now, uh, your question would be, are they muksa? If, if you would be only in a private domain, in other words, around the house, ah, could I carry ah. my sword, bow, shield, or Allah? Ah. So that, that would be a, a question of muksa. Yeah. We're not dealing with the muksa. We're not dealing with the untouchables. We're dealing ah, with, okay. here I have okay. something, I'm wearing it, so can I go into the public domain, from my private to public domain? Can I carry these things? So again, according to the first opinion, absolutely not. He says they're neither clothing nor ornaments. That's your opinion. Ah. They're a burden, and one who carries them for private to public domain has performed the biblical forbidden labor of hotsa'a, <coughs> of transferring from <coughs> one prim, uh, one uh, 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 from a shul to a how do you say that? Uh, I want to say premise, but it's not a premise. Premises. It is premise. You would say premise. <laughs> Okay, premise. Yeah. From one premise to the other. Sure. Okay. Yeah. From right. Private. From private to public, or from public to private, whichever yeah. the case is going to be. Now, that, that's the whole thing. If it's a burden, I cannot, uh, when we call it something I'm picking up, there's no, there's no other use for it. I'm, I'm just carrying it in the end. By the way, that's also why you can't pick your kid up from outside. In other words, if your kid is, you want to drag your kid, like you like to drag the kid, okay? <laughs> so they drag, and the kid's dragging, so they pick the child up. You're not allowed to. Yeah, no error. No yeah. error. I'm talking about no error. Yeah. If there's an error, pick them up and throw them on your shoulder. I don't care. <laughs> but it's, it's uh, when they're doing it, when there's no error, they rely upon another principle that living things carry themselves. Well, the halacha says that's not true. If I'm picking up the child and I'm carrying, carrying it from place to another, that's forbidden. Mm -hmm. With no air. Oh, oh, again, no air. So here, that's the same sort of question here. Is it uh, uh, something I'm carrying or is it not? If it's an ornament, which is why uh, if I want to carry a key, how do I do it? I make it part of my belt buckle. I turn it into, if I'm a woman, I turn it into a brooch. 
Bro, bro, yeah, bro, yeah, bro. Pin, it, pin, it, right. on pin it on a thing, but it has to be a beautiful thing. So yeah. I have to make it to make it look gold, whatever the case meant to be. Yeah. Yeah. Or I make it into a tie clip. Ah. Uh, that's another thing I can do. So that way it becomes part of the clothing. If I don't do that, and I just leave it in my pocket, dangling while I'm carrying, okay? So you can't do that. It has to have a real purpose at that point. So now the same thing here. So Rabbi Elazar is saying, no, they're all tukshit, and they're all, they enhance his appearance, tremendous. And Chachamim say, the rabbis say, enom, uh, enom el gnai. They are nothing but a disgrace. How do you know this? And uh, so, by the way, he says like this, before I go further. The sages do not represent a third view, but merely explain the Tadakam who said, you cannot go out with these things. Except for the sword which is hanging from the belt, the weapons mentioned by our mission are carried in the hand. Why then does Rabbi Adazar rule that one is not liable to a sin offering? After all, going out into the public domain with an ornament is permitted only if one is wearing it. One certainly should incur liability if he carries it. So the Pharisee Israel explains that an ornament that is normally worn, such as a ring, is indeed, indeed considered a burden when carried. However, certain items function as an adornment only when carried in the hand, a fancy walking stick, etc. Ah, ah. The other weapons in the mission fall into this category <coughs> and are therefore not considered burdens. Does Rabbi Elaz permit going out with these weapons on the Shabbat in the first place, or does he only rule that after the fact, Bidi Evan, one is exempt from being a chatat offering, this question is debated by different people. Okay. So he says, so how do the rabbis explain that there's nothing but discretion? And Marcus says, that they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their plowshares into, uh, and their, sorry, and their uh, spears into pruning shares, Lo yisa goy el goy charev, a one nation shall not lift up another a sword. Velo yimadu od milchama, and they shall learn neither learn war any more. So since we say that uh, that's enough from Isaiah, and so if these he explains if these weapons are functioned as adornments, they would not be consigned to oblivion in the future. Right? God saying, "I'm going to. They're going to be uh, in the future. Oh. When Mashiach comes, they're all going to be your swords into plowshares, your spears into pruning shears. You people won't lift up sword against each other. They won't learn it, learn war anymore. So if that's the case, they're not ornaments. Ornaments are things that are going to be even in the Messianic times. I like the ring. I wear the ring. I like the tie. I wear the tie. I like whatever. I'm going to wear that that ornaments. Fine. So that I the crown. I like the crown. I like the hat." Okay, by the way, uh, the black hat. When you put the black, when you put the rain hat on the hat, that's yeah. not, that is a burden. Without an Arab, you can't do that. Yeah. Okay, and some people say with an Arab, you shouldn't do it. But uh, none of, I'm not going to get into those ah. minor points. Ah. <laughs> Again, this isn't a halacha share, but it's, uh, it's something that we have to think about when we're looking at these laws of Shabbat and saying, well, I, and I remember somebody, want to argue that they could carry, there was not an Eruv, uh, and they want to argue that they carry the, the gun because of protection and blah, blah, blah. Without the Eruv. Well, yeah, there was no Eruv. And, so, and he wants to argue that he could do that. And based upon this, and I was thinking, come on, really? This is not an ornament. Everybody's, nobody's going to argue that the gun is an ornament. Everybody's going to argue, no matter who you are, and... What's it, I want to say NAACP. Who is it? NRA. NRA is admitting that the gun is there for protection. It's not there for any other reason. Oh, oh so wait. So this, this was a discussion, I believe, that a certain son-in-law of mine had a long time ago before there was an error there. You only have to. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah well, okay. And uh, right. that uh, since the state already had uh, concealed carry law and he was licensed to carry and he did and presumably still does carry every day that that was part of his clothing I, and he got some support from some other Jewish organization uh, JFPO was it uh, what's JFPO 
uh, Jewish, Jewish people for guns, or <laughs> pres- maybe it's JP, I put Jewish uh, for preservation, the firearms. Okay. Sasa, I think it's right. the other word. Okay. But uh, you know, very pro gun, and and their rabbi that ends the heads of organization said it's uh, his sock was it's, it's allowable because he wears it every day. It's part of his clothing, something like part of uniform, you know, something like that. <laughs> Again, I'm not going to rule on uh, individual <laughs> that's, things. I mean, that's where he was coming from. I understand. So, the, again, the question is, is it, is it, uh, he's coming from the, the side that's an ornament. Ah, okay. So, yeah. the question would be, See, is, it, is it really an ornament or is it not an ornament? <laughs> and, you know, do you, now, that the person we're talking about, I'm sure would wear it to uh, his own wedding even. So I'm sure that he would wear it wherever it is. I have no problem that people will wear it. The question is, is ne- we have to understand something. Halacha never looks at the individual when we're making up these gazeras, we're making up the enactments. We're looking at in general. Is this or is this not an ornament? And there's, you know, it, it comes to certain foods. It says it's not fit for a dog to eat. So you're gonna tell me, but I know that Plony eats this food. We don't care what Plony does. We're looking in the general yeah, yeah. thing. Who, what is this human food? Is this animal food? Is this what kind of food? Is this what normal people do? I'm not saying it's not normal, but is this what yeah. the regular guy in the street will do? And he sees it. He will admit. He sees it. This, this is how I dress. And no matter where I go, this is how I do it. Because this, I consider it a beauty, a beautiful thing. Mm. I, I, it's my manhood. Whatever you want to argue. Is that the normal no. way? Or is it? Again, I'm willing to admit, that I'm willing to say that I believe that the NRA would argue it's my God-given, well, it's not my God-given right, <laughs> it's my constitutional right to, wear, uh, to ha- carry a gun for my protection against the government. I believe that's how they even put it. Yeah. Okay? But that's all it is. It's a constitutional right that I have to protect me from the government going haywire. And so I protect myself, but it's protection. It's not an ornament. It's not bonanza where you had your gun hanging you down. You with the general thought. Right. 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 Yeah. I mean, in the days of bonanza, where little Joe and a uh, horse were running around, I guess everybody, but even when they came home, they took off the belt. <laughs> it was when they were going out. Again, it was protection. Yeah. It was to show how good, yeah. how big a man yeah. I am. That's all it was. Mm-hmm. And so if you watch bonanza, you know. Uh, I, and I, of course, Bonanza is real, right? <laughs> <laughs> I always date myself on these things. I use Bonanza. <laughs> you know Bonanza because you see my, me TV. Gun smoke, right? <laughs> but really, that's what it was. I don't think it's to argue that anything that we have today, the, again, the knife, the gun, or whatever, is an ornament. I don't, I'd be very, it'd be hard, it'd be hard to say. The only one I could say it for, maybe, is, and I could see this argument being made for the uh, defense forces. In other words, the army. That's uniform. You have to be in uniform. In uniform, I have to have my gun, I have to have my, my whatever I'm having. In uniform, I have to have it. I could see that argument. But I'm not in uniform, Ooh. I have a hard time hearing the argument. I'm not saying, I'm not, but again, I'm not ruling one way or another because we're not in that, I'm not in that mode right now. Friend of mine, a guy I knew a long time. I went to, I went to after school theater with him, uh, and after his, he served in Vietnam. And after his hitch, he got out. So he he signed up with, uh, I guess, the National Guard, he, and he became a uh, MP, a military policeman. Right. And so uh, I, I think he became employed like full time or most of the time. And so he 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 wore his, you know, uh, class A uniform. That's you know the one that looks like a suit, not the fatigues, right? And he, he wore his gun all the time. It was an authorized military weapon. He was obligated, required to wear yeah. that gun. Yeah. He told me he went to Shul one shop this morning, and they told him to take the gun off. He said, no. <laughs> he said, I, I just, my uniform, I have to wear it. <laughs> yeah, uh, when somebody comes with a gun, I don't say take it off. I say, just make sure you don't shoot it in my hand. This is a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. No, but, yeah. The funny thing with the gun from Bonanza, yeah. like the, the pistol by the side, having that, having that out and showing with the ivory, whatever, it's like, oh, thank the gun. The, in the actual old west, the, the, the funny part is, 
the rifle on somebody's back on their horse, the big gun, was the gun that they actually were using for like self defense. The pistol was to clear your way if you needed to to get to the rifle. Okay. So okay. You, want, you want to be as far away from your enemy as you could be because you don't want to be. The, the pistol is if you find yourself in the okay. pistol range, you want your rifle. Okay. So, but again, would the pistol be considered? Uh, in the what you're saying, it sounds like the pistol would have been considered an ornament. It was an ornamental more than any more than you really wanted to use it. Right. right. But it, but it would make a statement. Yeah. Correct. So, like I said, I don't, I, I can't get into what the rabbi said. I don't know what, but that's this is really argument where he's going on. Yeah. Is it or isn't not? And you have an argument about. And there's, again, the sages, the chachamim. <laughs> Are saying they're nothing but a disgrace because the verse says they're going to be ground up into. Uh, they're going to be changed. Their purpose will be changed, uh, and uh, so they're against walking around with sword, bow, shield, and, and this Allah again. Mace. They refer to as mace. So the mace is. Uh, it says where is it? Uh, it was a metal club with a round studded... Oh, mace. English yeah. mace? The English M-A-C-E. mace. Right. Yeah, that's, that's a, a big iron ball with all the right. points sticking so out. So right? those were things that they would be carrying right. as for, for war. <laughs> right, for, for war. And so the, the rabbis were against it. Now, by the way, if I really want to... I'm not sure when the ra- which generation we're looking at when you said the sages. But it could also be that right. there was... Throughout the Gomorrah, and here I'm going to be... Uh, I'm sure some people could watch this. Says, ah, he's making this stuff up. But in the Gemara, you have a split between two groups. In uh, some of the saying, fight against the Romans, and they would they could be the ones that say you have to go with the sword because you have to be ready to fight them. And the other ones are saying, lay low, lay low. What, this is not how we're going to survive. Stop, stop the stop the uh, stop the negative energy, if you will. Stop the fo- stop the war. And that would be the ones who were against it and bringing proofs up. So it's, it's interesting, the, what, the, what the question I would ask on this, and again, uh, I'd, be, I'd be careful with the question, but wh- which side of the fence were they on? You know, like today, which side, when we're talking about, unless you have the right versus the left, even when the right versus the left, which, when somebody says something about guns or anti-guns, which side are you really on? Are you going from halachic point? Are you going from a political point? Or are they, are they merged? And here, we, it could be they're merging, it could be, no, no. They're saying this is, the rabbis could be just saying, no, you know what? It's totally forbidden. They're nothing but disgrace, and I have a, a posse to prove it. Forget every politics there is. I'm not interested in politics. It could have been as simple as that, too. So it would be interesting to know who the sages were who were saying this. And was this a, uh, and again, was it a political statement, or to keep away from the problems that the Jews kept coming up with? Because remember, you had four groups. You had the Essenes, which were removed already. You had the Zealots, what they wanted to call the Canaan, the Zealots. They were the war, the, the warring faction. You had the Sakari, who were part of sub, probably a subset of the Zealots. And then they were the dagger people. Then you had the Pharisees, who we're part of. And then the uh, Sadducees, which are gone. Okay, so the only group that remained actually are the Pharisees. That's the only group that really remained. But that, that was the, rab- the Pharisees were saying, let's just lay low. Let's, we have to go to learn Torah. That's all we should do. So it would, it would be, uh, you know, and they were right, by the way, because we survived. Because what they did, we survived. We didn't die. The zealots were wiped out. Essenes were wiped themselves out. Okay, uh, and then the the Sadducees assimilated. So that's what I'm saying. We're the only ones who survived. That that Sakari also stabbed themselves to death. Good. So they were also gone. They're, all those groups died. We're the only ones who survived. So Where it would have Samaritans come from. Samaritan Samaritans. Samaritans. So they they were people right. brought in from. Uh, uh, the other countries by Nebuchadnezzar, and they were they were, for, uh, they were brought to Israel. What happened was they were the uh, the lions attacked them. They asked the Jews how to get the lions away. The Jews were told them you have to convert, follow God, because this land is very particular to God. 
and they did, but it was a false. It wasn't a full conversion. I mean, these people, these people today, who consider themselves descendants, uh, and and they follow a, a kind of a, mm -hmm. a, a quasi law. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. They yeah. don't follow rabbinics. Is that they don't follow right. They don't follow rabbinics. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So now here we go. So uh, I already said the first line, Ma ba Allah. What's an Allah? What's it mean? The Allah so refer, kulfa refers to the mate, uh, the mace. So Rabbi Elazar, Omer Takshit Mehenlo. So Rabbi Elazar uh, is looking at, the, again, we're looking at uh, why Rabbi Elazar said they could wear these we the weapons. He said because they are ornaments for him. So Tanya, Amrulo Rabbi Elazar. So I was taught in the Brighter, the sage said to Rabbi Elazar, Bechimi Achat the Takshit and Hainlo, inasmuch as these weapons are ornaments for him, so why will they be eliminated in the Messianic era if you hold that they are only ornaments and nothing wrong with them? So why will they be wiped out in the Messianic era? That's what we just said. Okay? Scripture is, is, is can't read English anymore, expressly states that they will be converted to agricultural tools. So, Amalahan, so we allow us to them, Lafisha, Ainan, Sarichin. Because it will not be needed for war, Shunemar Lo Yisa Goy El Goy Cherev. Because it says nations shall not lift up nation, uh, shall not lift up sword against nation. So, what else are you going to do with the weaponry? You have to convert it. Uh, by the way, you want to hear something? I, I love this part of Israel, the, the, the Jewish mentality. All the bombs are being dropped from Gaza, yeah. right? So there's a guy who made oh. uh, jewelry or something, yeah. or uh, sculptures yeah. Yeah. from these bombs. Yeah, from the casing. Right, yeah, from yeah. the casing. So he turned a negative to a positive and sold it to the world. Yeah. He says, thank you very much. Give me some more bombs so, so I can make some more. some more so I can make something more. I can make more money. Does he buy up uh, the scrap metal cheap from the government or something? How does he do no, it's, it's not the you government. He just picks them up. And picks it up. Lie. It's free. It's free. Go on the field. Have a good field. Have a good time. <laughs> it, 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 take what you want. Wow. It's like going to the dump and making uh, making money from the dump. Yeah, yeah. There was actually a book about that, making millions from garbage. I bought one of those for my wife. There you go. There you go. I remember seeing it in my house a long time ago, making millions from the But that's what it is. People throw away good stuff. So here they never, never they drop the bombs, but instead of living in fear, this guy decided, okay, I, I can do something with this, and he made uh, he makes sculpture from it, and he sells it. So that's what he that's what uh, Rabbi Lez is saying. We, right now we need it. So they're ornaments. This is how you walk around. Times of Mashiach, okay, so we won't need them anymore. So they'll be uh, th they'll be used for uh, we'll use it for something else. Instead of protecting, instead of protection, we'll use it for uh, our gardens. Fine. But the heavy lenoiba alma, but let it be worn merely as a dormant, even when weapons of a war are no longer needed. They should be used as ornaments. You're going to argue they're ornaments, so use them as ornaments. <laughs> ornaments of the past. Who cares what you're going to do? So Amar Abaye midi da havi ashuraga vidara. Abaye said a useless weapon is on something uh, on. A useless weapon is something that is similar to a lamp in a broad daylight. Okay. That was worthless. So he says, since the lamp in broad daylight is useless, is not attractive. Similarly, when weapons will no longer be needed, they will lose their appeal as ornaments and subsequently will be beaten into hose and pruning shears. But in our day, which is an era of war, weapons are ornaments. By the way, the same thing would apply to all our weaponry. If the if weaponry is no longer necessary, why would I bother with it? Right? Oh, nice. it's, it, it's not the the economy doesn't run on things that are useless. That's why you don't have the Edsel anymore. Oh. Right? You don't have these things because they were found useless. So if suddenly I would, uh, we don't. You know, how many swords do you see running around? Unless you're. Uh, you don't find so many swords. You don't go to the. No. There's one thing I can't, I won't find in Walmart a sword. I'll find guns. But I won't find a sword. <laughs> That's not a sword. That's a machete. Yeah, it's a blade. Uh, it's not a machete. Machete is machete. But and you'll find machete in there, really, in Walmart. Maybe not Walmart, but Home Depot. Okay, oh, Home Depot. Okay. One, one of but even in Home Depot, you won't find a sword. You won't find swords for uh right okay. 
But that's the point. Once it goes away, we go to some other weaponry, okay? So now, if it would be such a case that we wouldn't have guns, we wouldn't, need, wouldn't have the need for guns, we'd find something else to do with the metal. We would use that stuff to do something else, right? That's what, that's what the argument yeah. is. But yeah. he says, but if it's, uh, and that's why, when you, it's a useless weapon, it's, it's like a lamp in broad daylight. So, Upaliga, the Shmuel not bright, uh, disagrees with the opinion of Shmuel, and he says, Shmuel, it says, Albright, which assumes that weapons will become obsolete and they will best in an era conflicts with Shmuel, who holds that weapons will still be needed then. It is surprising that, uh, for the Gemara to say that a Bryce that disagrees with Namara, normally the Gemara would challenge Shmuel's view by, ba- by saying that a Bryce contradicts it. After all, a Bryce is y- of a, a better source than a, a Namara. However, perhaps this Bright was not established as authoritative, or perhaps since the topic is a Gothic, uh, Shmuel is uh, empowered to challenge the Bright. Uh, so, uh, so our school is not sure why they're even doing this. But nonetheless, please to Shmuel. And our Bright disagrees with the opinion of Shmuel. The Amar Shmuel ain't bein ha'olam azelim ha'olam Mashiach. The only difference between this world and the times of Mashiach, Ela Sheyav Shibud Galiot Bilvad, except for the subjugation of the Jews and the various exiles. And he says, Shmuel maintains that the Messianic era does not usher in any change in the natural order. What will change is that all Jews will return to Eretz Israel from the lands of their exile and dwell there in complete security and independence. Hence, the need for weapons will exist only for the other nations who will still battle one another. According to Shmuel, uh, then Isaiah 2, 4, uh, chapter 2, verse 4, they shall beat the swords, does not describe the circumstance of the Messianic era. Tosfot note that Shmuel's dictum is not to be taken literally, to be sure. There will be other differences between this world and the Messianic era, the existence of rebuilt Jerusalem and the whole and the Holy Temple, not the least of these. Okay, so interesting. So he says, uh Shanam or how does he know that there's no difference except for the subjugation of the Jews and various exiles? He says, Kilo Yechtal Evyomi Kerva Arts. It says that the poor will not cease from the midst of your land. That is a verse in Deuteronomy. A verse implies that this world, will, there, will not, there will always be poverty and wealth, and the Messianic era is part of this world. Therefore, the constellations of the prophet of, there will, not be, uh, there will no longer be paupers, does not refer to the Messianic, does not refer to the Messianic era. Rather, they refer to the next world. Uh, likewise, our verse, which foretells the end of the wars, refers to the next world. However, According to Shmuel, the next world does not mean the world of souls, where the righteous will sit with crowns in their heads, delighting in the radiance of the divine presence. For in that world, there is no bodily activity. On the other, uh, Isaiah, on the other hand, implies that people will still use hoes and pruning shares. Hence, the next world of Isaiah and the verses of consolation must be the time of the resurrection of the dead, when there will be bodily activity as distinguished from the world of souls, where there will only be spiritual existence. Okay, so we're getting into all that fun stuff. It says on the, uh, so it says, Messiah le'el rabbi yichia bar On the other hand, our bright which holds that Isaiah and the other prophetic constellations refer to the Messianic era supports the opinion of Rabbi Chia Bar Abba. The Amar Rabbi Chia Bar Abba called it Vim. Lord Nabu Elamosh Mashiach. For Rabbi Chia Bar Abba said, All prophets prophesied only about the Messianic era. Aval the Olam Haba, I and Loraata, Elohim Zulacha. But regarding the world to come, it is said, No eye has seen a God except you, that which he will do for the one who waits for him. And that is, even the eyes of the prophets were not capable of seeing the world to come. So, bottom line is, uh, we're going to come every single time to realize this. We don't know what is going to happen in Messianic times. We do not know what's going to happen in the world to come. We only know what we know. We can surmise from different verses what possibly will be but nobody has ever come back to tell us, hey, guess what? This is what's going on. So we will forever, it's 
is we should look at our psukim. We should understand what the rabbis are saying. But I wouldn't buy stock based upon one opinion or the other as to what will really happen because there are so many discussions about it. Do they know what's going to happen? But when they had the prophecy, since it wasn't like Moshe's prophecy, clear, it was a little muddled, if you will. So therefore, were they seeing it through their perspective or not? Again, we all hear, that's, that is the biggest part, problem actually, of prophecy. When we hear something, we go through our filters. And we all have filters. And depending on what our filter is, will determine how we understand what is being said. Okay, that's very important to, to get across. You're talking about uh, Nevi'im? Uh, I'm talking about any post, part. Post motion remaining. I'm talking about, yes, anybody past motion. Moshe had a clear vision, and even he had a filter, but he was the clearest of all the filters. But the rest all have tremendous filters, and they're, they're using those. And when we, uh, they will uh, give the words using those filters, uh, and ah, again, ah. to talk to the people. Ah. So Hashem is not telling them this is exactly what it means. Oh, so again, in the Torah, so when, uh, when uh, Moshe is speaking in the name of Hashem, he's, that's just what I'm, he's Correct. passing on exactly. Correct. Uh, Nevi'im afterwards, they're using their filters to convey these words. That we and they're use. using their own words. Ah, yes. Using their own words. Okay. And again, they're talking to their people. So uh, the people yeah. are, they have to, the people have to be willing to hear it also. So oh. the, and whenever we hear a story, we hear it through our filter. Oh. And there, he may, he's saying, he's giving it in his language, and we may understand it a different way than, he, than what he intended. Correct. And now, oh. and now in 2019, oh. 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 when we're reading those very words, oh. yeah. and we're seeing what the rabbis said that they meant, and now we're, we have even worse filters. <laughs> And we're trying to figure out, well, what does this mean? And how do I apply this today? Because all the prophecies are applicable, it's just that we have to know what it is. But for somebody to take uh, a prophecy, uh, Christianity does this, uh, take a prophecy at face value. Yeah. Well, no, that's, it was never meant face value. Forget that. Oh, oh, it was just never meant. You don't understand what the face value was because you weren't back in those times. I have to be back in the science to understand face value, right? So that, that's what I'm saying. When people read these things, they, they have, oh, so this, was, this is what's going to happen. A, lamb, a lion will lie down with the lamb. No. <laughs> no that's, how, that's how what the prophet meant. Just to look at what the prophet meant. It wasn't what he meant. And it's certainly not what it means today. We don't have to see a total change in nature. I'm not saying it wouldn't or couldn't happen. I'm saying that's not, it's clearly not what he was referring to. Okay, so that, that's, that's, what's, uh, that's why when Shmuel says there's no difference between the Messianic era and today, except for the subjugation of the Jews, in other words, we won't be subjugated anymore, that makes sense. But it doesn't, that would be his vision, his filter, and he's getting that from verses. And that's what it says. He proves that Kilo Yechdel Eviumi Kerva Arts, because there will be no poor that will cease from the midst of the land. Why? In the time of the Messianic era, we still have poor people? Yes. So he's learning from that. Okay, we'll have to stop here. Yeah. Wow.